It was a dark and stormy night. The rain fell in torrents, except at occasional intervals when it was checked by a violent gust of wind which swept up the streets, for it is in London that our scene lies, rattling along the housetops and fiercely agitating the scanty flame of the lamps that struggled against the darkness. So begins Edward Bulwer-Lytton's novel Paul Clifford. Mr. Bulwer-Lytton was not the first to use the phrase it was a dark and stormy night, but the guy who came up with the Bulwer-Lytton fiction contest didn't know that until years later. If you're not familiar with the Bulwer-Lytton fiction contest, the challenge is very simple. Write the opening sentence to the worst possible novel. And since we are more than a week into VEDS, I thought that it was about time for a challenge. So, my challenge to you, Vedsies, is to either take on the Bulwer-Lytton Fiction Contest and attempt to write the opening sentence of the worst possible novel, or to take a look at some of the previous winners and dishonorable mentions on the website and write the next few sentences of those terrible, terrible books. I like to think that I've learned a few things in my time writing. One of those things is to embrace the suck, as we say during NaNoWriMo. And another of those things is that constraints boost creativity. So, let's get creative and write some bad prose. I invite you to respond in your videos or in the comments below. I will also partake in this challenge, and so by the end of the month you will either have a terrible opening sentence or a terrible opening paragraph from me. And to wrap things up, I am going to read a few of my favorite dishonorable mentions from this past year's contest. As hard-nosed P.I. Dan McKinnon stepped out into the gray, gritty dawn, a bone-chilling gust of filth-strewn wind wrapped the loose ends of his open trench coat around him like a day-old flour tortilla around a breakfast burrito with hash brown sausage and scrambled eggs hold the pico. When she walked into my office on that bleak December day, she was like a breath of fresh air in a coal mine. She made my canary sing. She sauntered into his smoke-filled office with legs that although they didn't go quite all the way to heaven, definitely went high enough for him to see that she was a giraffe. First thing I noticed about the detective's office was how much it reminded me of the baggage claim in a nearby airport. The carpet was half a century out of date, it reeked of cigarettes and cheap booze, and I was moderately certain that my case had been lost. It was the time of the Salem witch hunts when Pastor Edwin Shonsbury entered his home one night to a scene of horror in which, just beyond his son drawing pentagrams on the floor and his wife writhing as if demon-possessed, he saw the cat with the last bit of bacon in its mouth. In Gertrude's experience, love-making was always bittersweet. Or at least it had been until one fateful night when Chaz, the seductive man behind the concession stand, blessed her with the salty sweet bliss reminiscent of both true romance and quality kettle corn. As the angry mob of poets filled the National Mall, a group of sonneteers and ballad mongers surged towards the Capitol building, but it wasn't until the Japanese poem enthusiasts stormed the White House that I realized this was a genuine haiku d'etat. The gentle, rhythmic sound of water lapping at the metal hull of the boat transported Philip back to a simpler time of marshmallow campfires and magical summers at the lake, until, upon waking, he came to realize that it was only the sound of the Roomba vacuuming robot which had short-circuited and was running repeatedly into the baseboard heat register. The rules of drama are many and varied, but the most important, as stated by the great writer Chekhov, is that if there is a banana covered in axle grease in Act 1, then you better hope that the theater burns down before Act 5. Much like Lord Voldemort, a piece of writing can be terrible and great at the same time. But hopefully your first sentences will not be as evil as the Dark Lord. Good night, friends and fellow Vedsies, and I will see all of you tomorrow.